In this video, I'm going to show you probably one of my most uh, fun antennas to put up. It's an unbalanced dipole. This thing is something that I made a while back. And this antenna is super simple to make. I use the traditional wire that I use, like the 24 gauge alarm wire, insulated wire, and some of my line winders that I made. I made these things before I think uh, 3D printers were common. So today I'm going to be putting up this antenna at a park in town and showing you how it works, how fast I put it up. This antenna works really great with the KX2 with the built-in tuner. It's not far off on a lot of the bands and I've made an awful lot of contacts with this thing. I did use it with soda initially, but I found that on a soda, I have to be guaranteed that I'm gonna have an antenna that works. So I'll use a balanced antenna in those conditions. For today, I'm gonna to show you this antenna, how fast it tunes, how well I can hear, and how easy it is to put up. This antenna here is a 41 foot um, radiator on one side and 34 and a half feet on the counterpoise. I know my little wire winders are, they're not that great. They're just, they are what they are. And I've got some string on the other end. I'm gonna be using three poles, three masts to hold this thing up. And I'll be using my 10 car fishing poles for that. One of them broke a long time ago. And so I only have, uh, I took a few sections out and I only use it maybe eight, nine feet up in the air. And that works fine for the center insulator. So let's get right to it. Making contacts is fun, but I think uh, actually deploying the stuff and figuring out ways to get your gear up and running. MacGyvering is half the fun, I think, or maybe three quarters of the fun of actually building antennas and getting them put up out in the field. Let me know in the comments down below what is the most fun about doing portable operations if that's what you do. And what kind of environments do you set up on? Do you go into parks like this? Do you go up into the mountains? Do you go into the cities and do things like this, set up equipment and get operational? I think the worst thing I like about going to the city is the noise. Not the noise of the people, but the electronic noise that interfere with your radio operations. So here's a good example. I'm using one of these banana clip BNC adapters. And granted, this is the, uh, the male side, it's the wrong end. I've got a bunch of different sizes of these things. So, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. I've got adapters and I don't care because there are different situations for different radios and different coax that I might hook up to it. This just so happens to be this kind. Here's one of the things you run into when you're out portable operating. If you do this, you know what I'm talking about. You get out and you don't, let's say you're not taking all the gear you're used to taking. Well, you're taking something that you've taken before and you don't always have it set up right. That's why you bring extra supplies to get yourself up and running. And you learn an awful lot about doing portable operations by doing it often and not having all the gear that you need. It's great to plan ahead of time, but like for example here, I just took off and decided to set this up. So in 15 minutes, I was out the door, grabbed my bag for whatever was in it in this antenna and went to town. I've got different string that I carry with me, this particular one, and none of this stuff is sponsored. I'll put links in the description below if you're interested in any of the hardware to put something together like this for yourself. This paracord here is good for 100 pounds pulling strength. That's an awful lot. There's no way an antenna is gonna do that. And it's super lightweight. This stuff is super thin. The measurements here are 3 64ths of an inch. That's another thing, if you've done this before, you understand the value of having colored string. It's so you can find it in the grass. If you get camouflage, anything, forget it, you're gonna lose it. That's just how it works. And of course, on most all of my antennas, I use uh, proprietary, uh, just put a knot in a piece of uh, paracord. So it's easy to do and you can get the stuff anywhere. So I add some string on here and I'm gonna tie this on because I needed to make that. One of the reasons I wanna show you this today is to show you that you can be resourceful when you're out here doing this sort of thing. And that makes it, I think, a heck of a lot of fun. If you agree, let me know. I think this is just, I mean, that's what it's all about. Because if you were in an emergency situation and you needed to do this, um, it's good to have some practice in making these things. That way you can get yourself operational quickly. To save some time, I'm just gonna hook up my RG174, trusty RG74, to the center insulator. Then we'll put up the ends. And as some of you guys may comment on the fact that I should have the uh, the right connector to begin with. Uh, you know, maybe you're right. But I have what I have and that's what I'm using. And I keep a bunch of different connectors inside my uh, KX2 bag. This happens to be one of my barrel connectors. I'll get that in focus here. It's always good to have at least one of these with you whenever you're out. You never know, you might run across someone that needs a connector or your coax breaks and you have to hook into something that someone else has. It's not what you normally use. 
Okay, so here's a perfect example. I'm out of my operation, I'm getting ready to set up, and I'm missing a piece of hardware. I need the elastic wrap, the metal tie wrap that I normally fasten this mast to and get it up in the air. Well, turns out one of my elastic or uh, twisty ties is gone. I could have lost it on the trail, or maybe it broke, and I don't have that. So we're gonna make do. So we're gonna turn this antenna into a sloper. This is the 41 foot section. And I was gonna just pull this right out here along the ground and have it only, you know, a foot or so off the ground as it sloped its way up. But I normally put the string on the end of my line winder enough to tie off to a tree. And I'm gonna use that to tie this mast on. It's not gonna be super strong. It's gonna be enough though to get it up in the air at least four feet and that's gonna be good. I'm creating a little loop at the end of the string and that's what's gonna hold it on to the top of my mast. It's gonna let me attach to that. And yet I'll still have access to the rest of my string. So now I've got enough tension on here and I've got my quasi sloper off the ground. It's at least four feet. All right, there we go. Using the existing line winder, I've got my tension and here we have it. Now I got the wire ends, both ends up in the air. I'm gonna hook up the radio, let's see what it sounds like. What's the tuning like and how's it gonna work for us today? I got the coax connected to the uh, trusty KX2. I'm gonna start with um, 80 meters, even though it's still daytime. I wanna see how this thing's gonna tune here, how far off it is. Not so good on 40 meters, almost five to one. So that's not so good. You know, uh, 97. Just click it up. I mean, we've been here for two hours. Ah, uh, we're not interfering with him, so what the hell? Man. <laughs> you never know who you're gonna have it, that's right. You, you never know who you're gonna run into. I'm pretty far up the band now, and I'm gonna try, uh, let's see what it's like up this far. That's yeah, better. Two to one. It's not great. It's not a. Uh, it's not a resonant antenna. Let's see what that's going to be like. No, I never copied too much of that. Uh, I got that you are in Brazil. Ty two AD. Ten is even worse. All right, today's conditions were not that good for me. And of course I'm working with a compromise antenna. I'm not very far off the ground. And so my tuning is not very good. Normally this antenna works a lot better. Band conditions are really bad. The guy you were hearing on the radio was running 100 watts and the QSB was horrible. He was going up and down. So my little 10 watts with a compromised antenna, I'm doomed. Doesn't mean it's a bad antenna, it just means conditions are bad. You may have a bad day or you may have a good day. It's those good days that make it all worthwhile getting out and doing this. Even though I didn't get to make a contact in this short amount of time that I'm out here in the park, it was still an awful lot of fun. I love putting up antennas, putting them back down, and you never know. Someone might come up to you and ask you what you're doing, and you get the opportunity to share that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video showing you a different antenna, another portable antenna that I like to use when I'm out doing portable operations. If you got some value out of this and you liked it, uh, smash that like button down below. It helps the video and it helps the channel. And of course, if you're new here, consider subscribing to get more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.